it's not that I disagree with you guys. I mean, I agree with you guys. All these points are very valid. Um, I just, I'm not ready to just excuse Justin Fields. I mean, you had a pick six in this game. You had a fumble in this game. You know, that's two turnovers just at the hands of the quarterback. Both of those came, though, after they were down 31 to 10. And I believe at that point, most quarterbacks do. You try to play, you try to be Superman. Yeah, you try to press. You know, the thing that pisses me off about the coaches is it took them five to six games last year to learn this. So it it is kind of shitty to come out this year, kind of try the same thing you did last year after it took you five to six games to to learn. You need to run a different style of offense. It's like they didn't learn. Yeah, well, exactly. These are, but these are in our but, old videos, Paul. You said my biggest concern with Lou Getze is he got a bunch of shiny new toys, and now he thinks that he can turn Justin Fields into what he ideally wanted to. He he force adjusted himself week six to do what he needed to do to get by. But yeah, he got a bunch of to... shiny new toys, and he thinks he can go back to weeks one through four of last year, and that's not the right way to progress. You need to build on what you did successfully and then add on to it with DJ Moore and stuff like that. But he he went reverted and went back to, this is what I ideally wanted to do week one of last year. And now I'm going to actually try it again because I got more talent. And it's, it's, it's asinine. It's you're, 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 it, well, this isn't what the NFL is. Well, you know, the guy I'm most pissed at personally is Chase Claypool. In my opinion, like he helped wreck this game so much. Um, and it's not, not just in the passing plays. It's in a lot of running plays, in the blocking. Dude, there's, you know. The other I thing think about a little bit too like much blame so much on Claypool the there, though. I mean, he did. He got blown okay. up on that one block. But, I mean, a he also of- ran some good routes to help get his teammates open. He had some good blocks in the game as well. Um, I think overall on tape, Claypool wasn't as bad as people are acting like. He did. He when he got blown up on that one screen, it, it does. It looks pathetic. I mean, and that's. I think I even called that out, and it's something I've called out. But overall, it's not like he wasn't trying the whole game. And then on top of that, I, I know Equinemius. He was brought in for his blocking skills, but he w- did. You watch him in the preseason? He was absolutely awful. I don't know if he's been banged up, but he was one of the worst run blocking or blocking receivers i've seen in preseason so i don't know if the effort wasn't there so i I just that take for sure i I definitely don't think esb would have changed anything could we have maybe got a couple yards on that mooney screen sure sure but he's not a threat like defenses aren't scared of esb no i think think he's an expressive guy i think he's overly expressive and sometimes that rubs fans wrong um if you're winning people will love him because he's a guy that's going to hype everybody up and be out there yelling at the other team. And, but when you're losing, he's the guy who is going to get called a diva because he's, he's his gestures, his body language. It's almost like remember Jay Cutler, everyone always talking about his body language. No one's going to like Claypool's body language. A lot of time when we're not winning because he's not happy when we're not winning. He's, he's a guy who's not happy to lose, but he is a competitor and he is an insane talent. If if he plays up to his capability, and I, I think what happened early on in that game, he ran a couple of routes where he was open, and I think he might have got frustrated a little bit that Justin didn't hit him. And when that one play, there was definitely poor blocking. I, I saw poor blocking on a couple of them, but a couple of them, it was technique. It wasn't really effort. That one where he got blown up, to me, that was effort. Like that dude's little. Like grab him and throw him down. Like you're not saying anything incorrect, Swifty. I think you're just like you. You still have benefit of doubt for Chase Claypool, which is you know whatever that's worth. You know, in terms, of I like, always value he, talent, and yeah, he has that, and that's, about as much talent as you can get. Yeah, for sure, and he is. He, I, I told Polly his nickname is Mapletron. I, I love the idea of Chase Claypool. Um. I personally, at the end of the day, it's a sport where two guys hit each other as hard as they can in the head. And Chase Claypool, I think, I think he believes in the idea of what he can do in football differently than what he can do on the field in football. And like the most famous clip of Chase Claypool is him with the Brandon Marshall show, him and Pac-Man Jones, and he's predicting he's going to be, he knows he's one of the best receivers in the league. He knows it. He's going to go 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns, 100 catches 
and he's never even scratched that. So th- I think his he's a little bit, I don't want to use this word, but delusional in what his capabilities are in the football field versus what he's actually performing out there. And I'm not going to go – I my biggest takeaway was the first thing I said about Chase Claypool to Pauly. I texted him. I said, I don't think – I'm not going to say yes or no. Equinemia St. Brown makes a difference in the game. But there's lots of players on the Bears team that were very, very pissed that Equinemia St. Brown was a healthy scratch because they know they would have gotten more effort out of Equinemia St. Brown than Chase Claypool. 